Hello and welcome to part three of our US Open special. I'm Andy Proudman. And I'm Piers Ward. And today we're going to be talking about four simple steps to help you read greens better. Let's take charge of your game. Okay, so it's Wednesday, one day to go before the tournament starts, Andy. So these guys now, they will be on the golf course. They've have, they have done all their practice plans. They're, they're, they're prepping, but they're still going to be working really hard at reading greens. So today is all about reading greens. These greens at Pinehurst number two, lots of undulations. We know they've got the crown greens. We'll talk about that later in the week. But actually the putting surface themselves, lots of borrows, aren't there? Lots yes, of borrows. So it's fast as well. So they will be really quick as well. And it's, it's good at here. We're on the Asprey, we're on the, the third hole, the par three and this is a fast green and there's a lot of break to it as well so it's actually a lot of break so um, we're going to talk through this putt in a moment but what we're going to do is give you a little bit of an idea on green reading so you know how many of you feel comfortable green reading we're going to hit this very simple there's lots of good methods out there at the moment on this but we're going to just go through some simple things so four stages to actually hitting a good putt yeah. by reading the green as you want so Andy we've got a putt here what's this yeah. we've got Let's talk to those stages as we do this putt. So we've got a 40-foot uh, putt, possibly? Foot, yeah, a bit of a slope on this, a little bit downhill, a bit off the right. Okay. So let's go through the first thing, that the uh, first stage, really, yeah? yeah? And that is use your feet. So use your feet. So stage one, one use your feet. in the world will have a walk. They'll walk the green. So they'll walk down, and they use their feet to feel exactly what's happening. And as I'm walking down the green now, I get a sensation of what this green is going to do as I hit the putt. Now, some people don't even move their feet. They they stay behind the ball and stay there and just sort of look at the foot. But you get a lot. The best players in the world get a lot from feels. Okay, now as I walk down here now, it starts to flatten out as I get to the green. So I know there's a lot of slope early on in the putt, and then it starts to, start to flatten out. And actually a little bit left to right at the end. So number one there, first of all, have a little walk of the, of the feel of the green. It gives you an, an idea of... Um, the sensations, but also you can see how the green lies as well as you do. You can see slopes, can't you? So from there, you can see whether you're going uphill or downhill. And, and, and as you said, Andy, by using your feet, even if you just sort of, even if you can't see it, just standing there and going, hang on a bit, my right foot's higher than my left foot, that's going to tell you there's a slope from right to left. So, you know, use those feet, use that feel, but also by walking out there, you'll notice maybe things that you wouldn't perhaps notice would from behind know, here. Different things going on down there yeah. that you would just hear, yeah. And you could go behind the hole as well if you wanted, yeah. Definitely. You've got to be aware of slow play. Obviously, yeah, you don't want to yeah. take all day doing it. You can get it there. You can do this very quickly, but it's having it in your plan to do so, which is key. Okay, okay. So that stage one is is obviously use your feet, use your feet yeah. yeah. Stage two. Okay, yeah. stage two is find out your break, calculate your break. So now you're going to come back behind the golf ball. Now, as you can see here, we've put a golf ball probably six, seven feet to the right of the hole. Now, this is calculated that that is really where my my break is. So that's how much we're going to allow. Now, it looks a lot, doesn't it, for, for this sort of length foot? Yeah. And it really does slope from right to left here. So we're going to calculate that that's where I want my start line to be. So if I imagine a, a, a line from that ball to that golf ball, that is my target line. Yeah. And I'm going to make sure I'm going to play this shot and get it going towards that golf ball and let the green do the work. And okay. it's a common mistake that amateur golfers do, they don't allow enough. Yeah. Or they don't even pick a spot. They yeah. look at the look at the green, oh, a bit right to left, <laughs> and probably under borrow, they don't allow for enough break, and you'd miss that on the low side. Here. A lot of people miss putts on the low side, definitely. So that, that's really good. So aiming, so aligning from here, picking, you know, finding, finding the break from yeah. this angle. Um, we also mentioned as well that the putt at the end, it flattens off, actually goes a little bit left to right. Now, you, you will have only, Andy only found that out when he actually wore down there and he was down there as well. But you can read from there as well. So you can walk all the way out to here, crouch down here and say, well, yeah, there's a bit of left to right there. So that's, again, part of it. It's not always about reading it from there, but it, it pretty much is. Pretty much, pretty much is. Okay, so number three. Okay, number three. Okay, take dead aim. So, again, another very overlooked point here. Now I've got my spot. I need to make sure that I can align my putter to that target. Now, a couple of ways of doing this. So again, there's a very individual. Some people like to have a line on the golf ball yep. and then line that line up to that spot and then match it up with the line on the, on the, on the putter head there. Some people like to pick an intermediate spot on that line where they align that club face to. Now, that's my preference. I yep. prefer to pick that. That works best, best pick for me. Pick something in just about a couple of feet in front, yeah. Yep. A couple of feet in front where I can then aim that putter face. And Difficult on these greens. They are good. <laughs> But I think the key thing is here is find what works best for you, find what you're more comfortable with. And I think if you're over the golf ball and you're comfortable, 
it's really going to help you commit and have the confidence you're yeah. going to play that foot well. Mm -hmm. So I think taking dead aim, have a go at finding which one works best for you, either the line or an intermediate spot. And then really you're ready for stage four, which is commit to the foot. Okay. So once you've chose your line, once you've got taken dead aim, it's basically commit to that putt and get that pace right. Yeah, okay. Well, that sounds good to me. Should we yeah, have a go? Let's have a view. So, okay, so we've left the break. flag in there so you can see the hole, obviously. All that's left to do is to take that aim and commit. So let me just go through my routine of picking my intermediate spot. So you can see, this has taken a while whilst we're doing this, but you know it can be done very quickly so be mindful obviously of slow play yes but when you get to your when you get to the green as long as you get that putter out there pretty quick your actual walk to your ball will be part of using your feet so the first stage will be done for you okay so i'll pick my intermediate spot there okay now my routine i'll pull away now and just have a couple of practice swings to give myself that feeling and then i'm going to commit so i've taken dead aim now it's time to commit Little, little pass there. there. So, as you can see, the firmness of the putt there just just sort of ran it through the break. Yeah. So the the alignment there was okay, but the pace there. Have another go there. Down, let me down there. Because obviously we know that this putt goes left to right at the end. We've got to make sure Andy's got to now work a little bit harder on his pace so that the, the bank makes the ball bend. If you hit it too hard, like Andy said, the harder you hit a putt, the less it will borrow. And there's obviously a fair amount of borrow that Andy's taking into account. He wasn't thinking he was going to knock it four foot past. Definitely better. Still a bit firm, still flat break. Look right. at that. Hey, they've speeded up since we had our first practice putts. Well, I've got to have one more go at that. Well, he's, he's probably not this one in now. Shame you don't get three goes on the golf course, Andy. So, yeah, all that's happening there is hitting it through the break, and then obviously it's just, <laughs> it's not going to drop on by the hole. Here we go comes back a little bit. Yeah, it will come a little bit left to right, but you can see, because he hit the ball softer, the bank has taken more of the break, he's moved it more to the left, and then as you can see by the hole, it sort of straightened up. So, not not, not bad, not bad. I think it could probably be a little bit better. Yeah, best, uh, Maybe you were talking so much. It shows there, really, that once you have done all your prep, yeah. okay, there's obviously a little bit of work left to do, but then it really does come down to getting that pace right and really getting into the putt and getting the feel of the putt. Obviously, we've gone through that yeah. there, um, but you know, getting into that putt once you've done that and committing is really important. I think, and I think you're right. Once you do that commitment to that putt and you hit the shot, then you can assess was your green reading actually any good. And in Andy's case, I think his green reading was good. Yeah. I just think he didn't execute. Yeah. So, so if we actually got the pace that he wanted on that line that he committed to, it'd have been okay. But sometimes you'll do a plan, you'll read a green, and it won't be the correct one, but it doesn't matter. As long as you commit to it, and you do everything you can based on your green reading, you'll be okay. No guarantees that it's going it's to improve, Absolutely. Or, or guarantee that you're going to knock it in the hole, but it's giving you the best chance possible. That's Absolutely it. not. So there's four stages, guys. So first of all, feel, feel the ground. Use your feet. Have a look at what's going on. Number two. Calculate the break. Calculate the break. Number two. Three. Okay. Take that Take that game. As Harvey Pennick would say, yeah. take that aim. And number four, commit to the shot. Okay. So do those four things and that will just give you the best chance possible to play that shot, but give you the best chance you can knock it in or even get it close. Brilliant. Okay, guys, so tournament starts tomorrow. Um, super excited, looking forward to that. Let's see how these guys handle yeah. this, uh, these these greens because they are going to be You'll pretty tricky. see them do some of those things that we've just talked about. Yeah, so definitely. You guys there for that definitely. As well. Okay, guys, thanks for watching and we'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow on Me and My Golf TV. the left I'd want to play a draw and hold it up against there so okay. again that means I'm taking less club I've it's just over 150 iron it's quite a strong win of it seven iron it's actually gone I don't know you can see the ball on the camera it's actually right on line a little short maybe but I want